Endometriosis affects nearly one in 10 women, but often goes undiagnosed for years. If you are curious if your symptoms are endometriosis, this video is for you. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a double board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist helping people with endometriosis for over 20 years. And I want you to understand all about this condition. Is this if this is your first time finding this channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Subscribe to the channel so you get my weekly videos all about reproductive health. And if you are coming back, welcome back. I am so glad that you are here. You could have seen my other videos about endometriosis and fertility and painful periods. There's so much to learn about your body and we are here to learn about it together. There are two other ways to stay in touch and learn. Number one, my weekly Brave and Curious podcast. Listen anywhere you listen to podcasts. Number two, my weekly newsletter. Sign up in the link in the description below. You get reflections on reproductive health in the news, educational content, and some recommendations for books or products I enjoy. Today, we are learning all about endometriosis. Endometriosis is a chronic inflammatory condition that is tricky to diagnose. It can show up in lots of different ways and lots of different people and it can go undiagnosed on average for seven to eight years before somebody finally realizes what is causing their symptoms. Most people think about endometriosis being associated with painful periods, pain with intercourse, and infertility, and that is common, but there are some other really important things that I want you to understand. Today, we're gonna go over five things I want you to know about endometriosis. And stick around to the end of the video where I'll give you three very important questions to ask your doctor to help you advocate for your care. So what I want you to know about endometriosis. Number one, symptoms can vary. Some people can present with very painful periods, other symptoms that are cyclic and related to the hormone changes that happen with your menstrual cycle. So it could be cyclic GI symptoms, could be constipation, could be diarrhea, could be pain with bowel movements cyclic bladder issues, sometimes pain with urination or, uh, you know, getting up at night because you, you feel awful when your bladder is getting full. Some people get back pain. Some people have fatigue and other people can have no symptoms whatsoever. I call this silent endometriosis. So often think of pain with periods, pain with intercourse, can be a cause of infertility, can present with other symptoms like GI symptoms, bladder symptoms, and sometimes just fatigue. It can present in so many different ways, and it can present in the same person in slightly different ways. And it can change over time. So you cannot assume that just because you do not have the textbook presentation of signs and symptoms of endometriosis that you don't have it, because sometimes people can have it and they don't have any symptoms whatsoever. What I want you to know about endometriosis, number two, laparoscopy is the only way to definitively diagnose endometriosis. So endometriosis is a presence of lesions that under the microscope, they look like tissue that is typically found only in the endometrium or the lining of the uterus, where the, the endometrium is that lining of the uterus that builds up and gets ready for an embryo to implant if we're trying to get pregnant. And then if we're not pregnant, it sheds and comes out of the body. That is what menstrual flow is. It's that lining, a little bit of blood that's coming out of the body, that tissue, if it's found outside of the uterine cavity, so on top of the uterus, on top of the ovaries and the fallopian tubes along the pelvic sidewall, people have found endometriosis in the brain, um, in skin lesions and belly buttons. Like it is an incredible disease that can present in many different ways, but you have to see these lesions on laparoscopy or have a, you know, sample and have a pathologist look at it under the microscope and say, yes, this is endometriosis. Now that is frustrating that it requires a surgery, which has, you know, complications and risks like anesthesia in order to diagnose something. So there are times where people have a very strong suspicion of endometriosis, like they've got the classic symptoms, um, classic signs, and you know, the doctor could 
assume somebody has it, but I just want to be very clear that the only way to definitively diagnose this is to see it and to see that tissue kind of in the place in the body where it's not supposed to be. There are some tests that we are exploring in the reproductive community. There is an endometrial biopsy that you can look for a marker called BCL6. Sometimes that will be offered to fertility patients to get a suspicion of endometriosis. But again, it's not a definitive diagnosis. The only way you can be 100% sure is with surgery with a laparoscopy to look inside and be sure. Sometimes imaging can give a suspicion of endometriosis, like you can see lesions in the ovaries on ultrasound or collections in areas of the pelvis with an MRI. And along with symptoms, you could say, wow, this could be a picture of endometriosis. But not everybody who has endometriosis will get visual lesions that you can see with an MRI, with an ultrasound. And so if you don't have ultrasound or MRI findings of endometriosis, that does not mean that you don't have endometriosis. That was way too many <laughs> negatives. What I'm trying to say is if you have a normal MRI or a normal ultrasound, you can still have endometriosis. What I want you to know about endometriosis number three endometriosis is not always associated with infertility. I think that I am constantly thinking about it because I am a reproductive endocrinologist. I am a fertility expert. I am helping people build their families. And if someone is coming to me with infertility, um, I am ruling out things like, you know, male factor with a semen analysis. I'm making sure the fallopian tubes are open with an HSG. I'm doing blood tests and looking at anatomy. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about suspicions or does this patient also have endometriosis? So I'll ask about symptoms. I'll ask if they've ever had a laparoscopy before. And I'm always sort of thinking about it. But not everybody with endometriosis will have infertility. And not everybody with infertility will have endometriosis. A wonderful paper by Linda G. Deese. She was one of my mentors when I was in my fellowship at Stanford. Published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2010. Suggested about 50% of people with endometriosis will have infertility. What I want you to know about endometriosis number four, if you're having surgery to treat endometriosis or you're having it to diagnose and treat it if you find it, you need to know that there is a difference in types of surgery and find a pelvic surgeon that truly specializes in pelvic surgery and endometriosis treatment. The way I was taught 20 years ago was traditional laparoscopy, and if we saw lesions, we would typically um, uh, ablate them, you know, take an instrument to sort of burn the lesions to sort of get them away. Now we know that excision treatment, like actually removing the tissue and trying to get underneath a little bit of that lesion, is the best way to treat endometriosis lesions. And honestly, robotic surgery has dramatically changed pelvic surgery. I was not trained on the robot. It was at Stanford when I was there. I got to visualize it and thought it was an amazing technology. Uh, and so if you are thinking about doing surgery, it's really important to do your research on who is doing the surgery and the type of experience that they have, because not all surgeons are truly specialized in endometriosis. You could ask about, are you doing this, you know, with the robot? Are you doing this with just laparoscopy? You can ask, are you doing excision of lesions or are you ablating or cauterizing or burning the lesions? You want to look for somebody who has a lot of experience and trained to treat endometriosis and you want to look for someone that does excision treatment of endometriosis lesions. I hope this helps you. And what I want you to know about endometriosis number five, I want you to know about some really uncommon symptoms and presentations of endometriosis because it might spark a little bit of a red flag for you. I talked a little bit about this with my first point about how people can present in different ways, but I really want you to understand this. So I've got five unusual presentations of endometriosis, not just just pain, not just infertility. Number one, bowel symptoms. And this can be bloating. This can be diarrhea. This can be constipation. It's typically cyclical, kind of with the menstrual cycle, you're getting bowel changes. Not always, but if endometriosis lesions are on the bowel and you're having bleeding from your menstrual cycle, those lesions could also be bleeding and causing real irritation to the bowel. And it can show up as, you know, bloating, 
constipation or diarrhea. Number two, urinary symptoms. Again, if these lesions are on the bladder, that can be very painful and very sensitive, typically during menstruation, but also if the bladder you know, is getting full and you're in significant pain, of course it could be other things. You know, I'm not saying that all these symptoms are absolutely endometriosis, but it's just something to kind of think about. And when you're interacting with your doctor, talk about all of these things that you're finding because it can be little clues and red flags for the doctor to say, I wonder if this is endometriosis. Number three, pain with exercise. Like we talk about painful periods. We talk about, you know, back pain, you know, as the uterus is cramping and you're having your flow. But sometimes the pain can appear in unusual times and it can often just be associated with different activities and again endometriosis can present in many different ways number four you can have pain in unusual areas pain in your shoulder if you have endometriosis lesions in this muscle that's kind of right underneath your lungs it's called the diaphragm uh, if you have irritation on the diaphragm sometimes the way where you feel it is actually in the shoulder so sometimes shoulder pain during your menstrual cycle can be a sign of endometriosis sometimes people even have lesions in their chest wall so in their menstrual cycle it's more difficult to breathe and they're having pain these are rare this is unusual but i just want people to understand it can present in so many different ways and number five fatigue this is a common presentation of endometriosis. It can be associated with just how much pain someone's in or they're anemic because they're having heavy bleeding during their cycle. But it can also just be really significant fatigue. This is an inflammatory condition. This is likely an autoimmune condition. And as your body is sort of responding and trying to understand what is going on with these lesions throughout your body, you can feel significant fatigue. These vague symptoms can sometimes make it more difficult to diagnose. I just want you to know if you're having strange symptoms, just ask the question, could it possibly be endometriosis? I'm glad you stuck around to the end of the video because there are three important questions I want you to ask your doctor so you can truly advocate for your care. Number one, could my symptoms be from endometriosis? Even if the imaging is normal, sometimes you just have to lay it out for the provider, the doctor that is sitting in front of you saying, I'm having symptoms. I am curious if it's endometriosis because sometimes we just need a little bit of a wake up call like, oh, wow, I hadn't thought about that. Let me think about this a little bit more and kind of discuss it with the patient. Um, Number two, if you're considering surgery, really do a deep dive into the surgeon that you are seeing. Don't be afraid to get a second opinion. And when you go, ask about how they remove the endometriosis lesions, whether it is ablation or excision. And question number three, if you're getting the diagnosis of endometriosis, there's a strong suspicion of it, you know you have it, ask the question, how could endometriosis potentially affect my fertility? I do have people coming to me to do fertility preservation after a diagnosis of endometriosis. Endometriosis can impact fertility. It can get worse over time. Uh, and sometimes people will freeze their eggs or talk to me about kind of moving up their family building timeline when they get the diagnosis of endometriosis because we know age is a huge predictor of fertility but chronic diseases like endometriosis can get worse over time and fertility could get worse over time so it's just something to consider doesn't mean everybody that has a diagnosis of endometriosis needs to do fertility preservation egg freezing etc but it is really important to know what your options are endometriosis Endometriosis is complex, but knowledge is power. If you found this video helpful, please like this video, comment with questions that you have, share it with a friend. I've got other videos here all about endometriosis, and I really encourage you to check those out if you want to continue learning. I'm so happy that you're here. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss my weekly videos all about reproductive health. And until next week, wishing you love, luck, and pineapples. <laughs>